I've seen the end credits, there's still more to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll... And so you'll see like ding, 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 ding. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Talking about money, Matt. Oh shit! Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow! First time it came when called without multiple attempts. Craig, are you sobering up? He must be. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. He doesn't, even feel, he doesn't even feel the need to respond. <laughs> Where's my bottle? Give it to me. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Retro Rents Retro Gaming Podcast. It is our 81st episode. 81. On October 10th, as it's getting a little crisper out here. 10, 10. And I am Al. I'm Nick. How you been, man? This is like three times in a row now. We are on the two week click. I'm back. We're, in the we're back in the groove. Back in the groove. Which means I'll probably miss it in two weeks. No, I won't. I'm not. <laughs> I don't plan to at all. Although, wait, is two weeks extra life? Uh, it is going to be. No, uh, two weeks is the week before uh, Halloween. Is that going to be uh, extra life game day this year? I don't know. Usually it's November, isn't it? It's closer to I daylight thought, savings. I, I, I thought Jeremy. Uh, Hoodie Ninja mentioned something about the 29th. Let me November let me, let me... 6th. It is November 6th. November the 6th. So that right. is in, in then... a little less than a month. Yeah, in a month. <laughs> it, it is, it is you know, on the two week cycle. So <laughs> it'll be perfect time for like a live. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Oh, that would be. All right, everybody. Live Retro Rents uh, episode, basically me streaming, uh, Nick and I playing games, uh, especially if Nick is feeling extra charitable in that last four-hour stretch, and we all want to do some Phasmophobia again. Oh, yeah. I got a, I got a, a great suggestion uh, from our pal Hoodie Ninja, uh, from mm -hmm. Jeremy, mm -hmm. about Phasmophobia in VR, so maybe that will add another element to my stream. Oh, there this you go. Year. There you go. It it, it is yeah, terrifying yeah. in VR. <laughs> that's that's that, you know what? My former coworker at GitHub, uh, guy Antonio, great dude. Uh, I had mentioned about playing that game uh, in one of their team meetings, and he's like, "I just want to say, uh, I played that on Friday in VR, and." Uh, I was fucking terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no that that might be that might be what gets me on that final stretch. I think that oh, really yeah. helped last year. <laughs> It'll lie. get the blood pumping, that's for sure. Fucking terror will keep you going. <laughs> and or Krieger just I think it was Krieger just telling me what a pair of brass balls I had running from the ghost going back <laughs> in the <her> room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I know I mentioned it in the last episode. I know my kids will get real into it this year for sure, which will make it a lot more fun. Um, all right. Well, so, what have you been up to before I start yapping? Uh, you just uh, playing uh, server games, still playing Hades. <laughs> I love, dude. Do you understand how much I love that? You are still like I, I, yeah, I'm, I am hooked. I, I finally seen the end credits though. Um, mm -hmm. you know, no, you know, no spoilers for those who haven't dipped into it, but yeah, it's like even though I've seen the end credits, there's still more to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. well, what, what was our last episode called? Do you remember? Uh, it was something with the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, the skin of the onion. <laughs> oh yes, yes, skin of the onion. Yes, exactly. So yeah, like I, I've now you know, see more of the layers, but I, I think at this point I've now I, I now know what lies ahead of me. Like I don't think there's too much. Yeah, else you're probably getting pretty hiding. close at this point. Yeah, it's like it, it's pretty obvious. It's just a matter of like getting everything kind of checked off more or less. But it, like yeah, it's yeah, still crazy fun. Uh, you know, I kind of want to see the end of the, like each little storyline for all the characters and like you know where where's this going? Great, aren't they? Yeah, it's great. Absolutely. They, it keeps, they just, keeps driving you. Ah, oh, they just really... Supergiant really did their homework in Greek mythology, and then they were able to take it, like, steps beyond and just make oh, these yeah. characters 
so fucking interesting. Like Orpheus and uh, Eurydice. Like, my God, like, what a fucking storyline. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it's just, it's great, man. It, it's a great game. Yeah, so I've uh, been doing that. Uh, it's Icarus Beta Weekend 4. Uh, not too much different this, this weekend. It, it, they pushed back their Desert Biome release to two weeks from now. Okay, uh, yeah, I know you were really pumped for that. Yeah, I was, I was looking forward to it. Uh, I, you know, I'm not too bummed out. It, you know, it's more like they wanted to test a little bit more of the mission stuff. So it's a, so it's not the same as last weekend. It is still yeah. forest and Arctic, uh, <clears throat> but they added a new smaller Arctic zone to the same kind of area. And now mm -hmm. it's like you got to go to these bio satellites and collect the warheads. You basically they're they're the terraforming satellites. Uh, so they're adding a little bit That's more safe. of the lore aspect. Um, so nothing nothing much new. But you know, just kind of like you know. More of the same madness. We're still burning stuff down horribly when, you know, <laughs> we put torches in weird places. You know, the whole forest burns down. <laughs> so, you know, you've had you've had four good beta weekends in this. Yeah. Um, I'll compare this with, like, uh, my pal Captain Mike mm -hmm. uh, and some other folks who got in on the Battlefield 2042 beta. Ah. And uh, the universal opinion I hear is, please don't release this now. <laughs> Um, I, I, I've, I've been hearing rumblings of the, of the battlefield. It's like, it's like, yikes. It's like, you know, like, I guess the most common thing is like everyone's a specialist or everyone looks the same type of thing. Uh, there's that. There's like grass popping out of mountains. There. It, it just sounds like a fucking mess, dude. It sounds like a mess. And that, you know, for beta one, maybe that's cool. But if they're planning to drop this in the next month, uh, <laughs> yeah. When, when is the release date for that? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Give me one sec. I forgot to add a release that I bought and I'm, I have not played and plan to play. Because for some reason, I thought I thought it was releasing, but I didn't realize it was, it was just another beta weekend for Battlefield. Uh, what is this releasing? Actually, it's got to be end of November, isn't it? Because there was an, there was a Are thing about Icarus. Be that soon? Yeah, well, Icarus was saying, like, yeah, we're going to add one more beta November weekend. November 19th. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It sounds right. Because, yeah, because funny <laughs> enough with Icarus, like, it was going to release the same weekend. And they were like, you know, we won't, we won't kind of want two more weeks. We want to stick in another beta weekend. We're going to extend out, you know, kind of our testing cycle Not here. Not only that, you don't want to compete with that. Let and that then they, they, yeah, they added that, too. It's like, and it'll be the same week as Battlefield. And although Icarus is not in the same genre it's just like we don't want to really be on the same weekend as that, yeah, so. it's not even that you're competing with people's time exactly point. exactly so it's like yeah we'll, we'll just we'll, we're going to push it back you know kind of work on our game a little more and so i think it's now like mid-december or something like that is the new release date for icarus um in terms of uh, comparison like could icarus be released today um, not quite uh right. I, I only say that because but you think another month in the oven might do it i i, th I think they're close like it, like okay. they they saw they've been solving bugs every every bay you know st stuff that's popped up they've more or less <laughs> been solving there's there's been some persistent bugs but they're minor um so like one instance is like occasionally when you're in the you know uh, a friend's instance you won't see their fireplace for some reason uh, but if you log well, out and I log can't back play in, a game that doesn't let me see my. I, I know, right? Well, you can fix it more or less easily enough by logging out and logging back in, and then suddenly no, you, I ain't you doing see that. It. You know, I want to see. You, that you that got, you got to do it. I'm sorry. You know, you got to do the fireplace. You know, <laughs> tango. You you shake it to the left and shake it to the right. No, honestly, um, <laughs> and I, I say this with the utmost adoration. Um, I've been following the Pathfinder Wrath mm. of the Righteous uh, mm -hmm. patch drop hoping that my my main save issue will get fixed oh. uh, it still hasn't <clears throat> um and i think part of that might be me uh just because i play some of the games like that so fucking weird <laughs> that i'm sure i'm going down the path that like one developer is like no one's gonna go down this path <laughs> no one's gonna do with it. This. let's go back right. to the other ones um but you know they're still they're fixing a lot of issues and i'm just gonna let i'm gonna let it bake for another three mm -hmm. months but I say this with I fucking like that's my game of the year so right. far. Like I love Wrath of the Righteous. That just gave me something I was missing in a D and D kind of tabletop way translation. But the game where it's like we always played, you know, starting adventurers, but where you want to be that real badass and and fucking get the super Hercules Xena powers. Mm -hmm. 
Like, this game really lets you do that and then go well beyond that. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to pick it up again and then get to a spot where, like, I'm fucking game broke again. And I'm just going to let it, you know, let it sit. I, I'll go back and check it out in the new year. Um, and I don't say that with any anger or bitterness. Like, it's one of the most massive games I've ever played. And I'm only about mm, 60% through on my main save. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much more to go. And they put so much heart and soul into that. Like, Co Carnage is still fucking playing this game. Oh, yeah. And he's he's playing it pretty much every night. Like, it's one of the best RPGs released in a very long time. So I'm just gonna let it bake. I don't want I don't want to run into any more game breaking bugs or something that I might have to go a few save uh, saves back for. Sure. So I'm just gonna let it let it bake. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it still sounds like Icarus is in a better state. <laughs> yeah, like, well, that's the thing. It, it's it's very playable. Yeah, and, and that's probably the biggest thing. Like. Could they release it? Yes, and it's very playable. There's just a few like minor, yeah, you know, I'd say like inconvenient style stuff. But again, they've they've been solving stuff as they go along, so it's like, you know, as long as you keep seeing that progress, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it builds that confidence. Like, you know, yeah. will any game be bug free? Absolutely not. But it's like absolutely not. The, the I don't question is anymore. Yeah, can you can you iteration over iteration kind of smash the bugs or at least keep the bugs that are in there? minimal impact to the player you know that yeah. you know that that's what i'm looking for and so far it they're on that track so <laughs> so so far so good that's cool i'm oh. really waiting to hear about this next game in your paragraph because fuck does this sound interesting uh yeah so <laughs> the other game that has completely pulled me in <laughs> <laughs> in I'm like a, up my steam now. Y yesterday, I was on uh, I think a good eight hour bender. <laughs> what uh, of a game called Foxhole, um, and it's been kind of a a, a very wow. out of the way game. Like you, you probably never would have even seen, I never heard about it until recently. Um, Me neither. It's been out for five years almost. More uh, than yeah, five or almost yeah. Five, no, over four and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I think it's it, like only recently, like uh, big streamers such as like Summit One G has been playing it, and it's like really gained a lot of traction. And nineteen ninety nine too, you can't beat it. It's, yeah, it's super really cheap. My credit card info. <laughs> All right, go ahead. And uh, it, it's basically an MMO RTS is the, is kind of like the high level you know classification, but it's mm. an epic scale war, and from fighting to logistics, and, and I, I'm talking about. Every bullet fired is made in game. Like Ooh. you're not you're like going to some you know shack and saying, "Give me bullets. <clears throat> here, here's my money or whatever or anything like that." No, you are literally, you know, there's people in the back, you know, mi you know, mining stuff from mines, taking them to a, fa a refinery, putting the refinery to factories, cranking out crates of bullets and guns, transporting that to the front, and then the soldiers on the front then go to like you know their little bunkers and pull it out and go fight on the lines, and so you have like every aspect of the war is something players are doing and it, and it's it, it, it just it, you know we talk about battlefield here like you know it, granted this thing's been out for a while but it's i think it's only recently gained like super amount of traction because of like you know the streamers and whatnot yeah and um it, like basically to describe it like it's a huge map a huge hex map and each hex is kind of like a um uh, an instance, I guess you you could say it's not even an instance because it's, yeah. it's basically you know all one like shard. Essentially. Well, there's two live servers, so there's kind of two okay. battle scenario. Well, I say scenarios, but you know two battle instances that you could completely enter. Um, mm -hmm. so if you're you know basically you go into live one and you know it's, it's the same as live two where there's there's two factions. You know and there's basically the north faction, the south faction, wardens and and colonials, and you pick your side. And you're stuck with that side for the entirety of the battle of the war. Um, and I think there's been something like hundred yeah, plus I, wars at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this um, is drumming my strings. <laughs> and, 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 again, and again, like you can go with any role you like. So if like you want to fight all day long on the front lines, you can do that. You want to you want have the most like chill gameplay of like okay, I'm going to take resources from A to B, manufacture them, and it's like you could do that too. 
Um, oh, dear God. And, you know, it, again, in any aspect you can think of, like, you know, there, there's a, it, you know, and there's a lot of, like, in-game, like, sh- uh, I say shortcuts, but uh, shorthand. Uh, shorthand and abbreviations and and mm-hmm. uh, stand-ins for whatever. So there's a thing but called... It sounds par- like everybody from the gatherer to the shooter has a place in the war. Exactly, exactly. Even down to, like, tech. So, uh, you know, when yeah, the war starts... Hard. Yeah, when the war starts, you're starting off with just, like, some basic guns and whatnot. You can, you know, get your tech to, like, you know, these big, uh, what are called storm cannons, which are, uh, yeah. like, think of, like, the Gustav guns, you know, you know, the, the big, like, Nazi rail guns or whatever type of thing. Definitely getting hard. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you got those. Uh, you can eventually <laughs> get up to building nukes, you know, eventually. Um, it obviously takes a lot of resources, a lot of tech, like it's very much in game, you know, end war uh, <laughs> style right, stuff. So you're, 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 you're peaking my interest here. So, okay, okay sure, sure. So everybody, everybody's contributing on yes. the or whatever. Yep. Yep. Um, so who's building the nukes? Does this come down to like a commander player or is this something you can do? Uh, it, it, in theory, it's something you can do. Granted, the, you know, when it comes to, when you're talking nukes, like it's so many resources and whatnot, you're, you're really talking a mega guild and they're very much like large clans running around, yeah. you know, doing stuff. That being said, you can obviously contribute to the war effort. You know, it's like you could literally okay. you know, be the guy, like I said, going to the <clears throat> mines, picking up the components, taking them to the refinery, and you could either, you know, set a public and then someone else will pick them up or, you know, you can take them oh. someplace. And, and people will be throwing, you know, you'll see kind of, I say, general orders. So there's no like, you know, master commander, you know, commander of the field or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's you just more... join my black market network. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so but it's more like you, you'll see stuff on you know in the public chat, and you know they'll have markers on the on the map saying like, you know, like like the most most basic stuff is like you know there's there's a battle in a town, and they'll say like, hey, we need guns, you know, seven point six bullets and mortar shells, and so you know if you're in logistics or you know lodges. Mm-hmm. You'll be you'll be in the back lines, kind of looking over the map and saying, "Okay, what do they need? Oh, they need these things. Okay, let me build them and bring them bring them to the front." And like, so are it, you and Krieger and the gang getting into this? Uh, about half of us are are, are playing this already. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you played with them, but like, uh, DC Resp and uh, I think they were all in the Phasmophobia game. A DC sounds familiar. Resp maybe. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of the same group. But yeah, so it, we've tried to get Krieger into it, but he hasn't like he hasn't you know jumped the shark for that one. Yet. But yeah, yeah, we're, we're having a blast, and you know, uh, it, it's very much pop in, pop out. So it's not a case of like, oh, you're on the Western Front, and so now okay. you have to That's, travel. That was oh. my next question. So you can jump in, do your thing, and jump out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's no like like you know. And, and, and you know it's like oh your body you know it's like if I log out my body's there and suddenly I come back in I'm behind enemy lines or something no 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 it, it, or download that's all <laughs> yeah. I needed to hear yeah basically like, you start not, it, it, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead let me let you finish oh, okay yeah, like yeah the, the concept is basically you start at a what, what's a public lobby so to speak and this lobby allows for you to deploy anywhere within your territory. And then, so that means you can instantly choose, like, do you want to go to the front or do you want to go to the rear? And then, you know, if you're like, oh, I chose the wrong spot, you can easily go back to the deployment zone and then, you know, choose, uh, you know, somewhere else. Uh, The only catch is obviously if it's it's a very hot server like Live One or if a huge battle is going down in a grid. You might be queuing up or something. Exactly. And that's why there's all these hex grids. So, like, in the rear hex, it's like, yeah, nobody's back there except for Logi guys, and you know it's like only a handful maybe doing sure. something like that. Versus, <gasps> there can be literally you know hundreds of players in the battle hex grid, and it's like yeah, you got to queue up, and the queues really aren't that bad. Like I, you know, I was playing around peak time, and at most like it might be I don't know fifteen players deep, and that's you know, like I don't know like five to ten minutes of that's just even, sit, waiting. That's not nearly like even Final Fantasy fourteen has long. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not bad at all, and you're and you're kind of waiting bad. with other people at the same time, so you know just you know sh- you know shooting the yeah. shit, you know, and uh, you know in the, either your own Discord, no, still, you can game sit comes, in the lobby and, and shoot shit though in the queue. I oh, like that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now you know what. So what I was getting at, um, my pal. Uh, Paradox uh, used to be a former boss of mine <laughs> when I worked uh, at NetAxis back in the at the long ago day in my mm-hmm. commuting days, which I hope to never visit again. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Ryan got real into a game called Beyond Protocol, and it was one of the first like MMO RTSs 
that worked. That's the only way I can put it. And it sounds kind of like that, but like okay. it was an always running, always war. And it was kind of the same thing that like you could mm-hmm. set up, you know, you could be the shipbuilding company or you could. And like you had to get all the stuff. You had to set up all the logistics. You had to set up the supply lines and you could be attacked at any time. And like he was a nut for that. So I'm going to have to tell him about this one. But what I like I love the aspect of pop in, pop out, because, like, it was the one thing I didn't like about that game, is if I popped out, my my stuff could just be completely destroyed, and I'd be back at square one. Right. And to me, what's more realistic is, like, it's like war, you know? You, you, you know, look at, like, Band of Brothers. Mm-hmm. You're up on the line, or you're behind the line, you're doing stuff, or say you're on the front line, you're, you know, you... you you face some combat, and it's like, no, now you got combat fatigue. You're going to go to the back lines. You're going to go relax. And as long as the enemy doesn't completely overrun, mm-hmm. like, you know, it, it's in a way kind of more realistic. Like, you can jump in, jump out. Yep. Um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, I have it yeah. set to download as soon as we're done. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's no real, like, um, uh, you know, the usual trappings, I should say, of like, you know, modern games of like, you know, like get the seasonal item or, or cosmetic. Yeah, was or my like, next question, goddamn Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, you know, it, and uh, I don't know how big the, the gaming company is, but, it, you know, it's very, you know, I'd almost put on more on the indie side is the way it feels. Yeah, it um, looks indie uh, from what I saw in videos. Yeah. But you know what? Four years running. It exactly. It's like no frills. And I, I think that's part of the thing is like, you know, they just keep it low cost, you know, and they just make it work. Um, and yeah, there's no cosmetics. There's no, you know, battle season pass or anything like that. You know, it, it is what it is. Like, you you know, you are very just, dis- you know, there's no distinction between you and the other guy. The only that's the only true. thing you have is like your rank. And that's more like an indication of like, OK, it's a, it's a status. Yeah, exactly. It's like you've played the game long enough. We're gotten you basically rank up through what's called commendations. Like you know, you do something good, you can comment. You know, commend someone's like, hey, here's a, here's a thumbs up, and you get so many thumbs up, you get to be like a sergeant. Then you you know, it takes a lot to get up into officer ranks, but it's like you know, it's just a sign of like, okay, you've done enough good things, and people have complimented you for it. That is so fucking dope. Because what does that do? I mean, that even, it's almost better than the real life system we have, where it's like somebody you know and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, no, like you see somebody with a higher rank, you're immediately like, that, that's somebody I, I want to listen to. Like, that's somebody that yeah. knows what they're doing and I want to follow that person. Dude, that is fucking awesome. Like, I'm really yeah. pumped on this. And, and you don't really have to worry, again, worry about the stuff in your hand. Like, basically, it's like, you know, as soon as you go back to the main open lobby, you, everything you have is is gone. Like you know, whatever you're carrying. So does it go into like the pool of of shit for other uh, people to use? Um, I I don't think so. So like, kind of a key before okay. you log out is to dump it back into. There, there are bunkers that you can dump your stuff back into. So it's kind of like okay. one of those like courtesy, like please you know, be kind, rewind type things. No, <laughs> yeah. no, that's that's absolutely what I want to know because yeah. like to me. I, I want to make sure, like, when it's a collective thing like that, as long as that's an option, dude, that's wild, man. Yeah, and, and it goes back into, like, you know, again, it's like, you know, there, there's no, like, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm the king mad general three times over because, I'm you know. Captain <laughs> Whale with a bottomless wallet. Like <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's wallet. like, here's, here's my wallet. I've played since, you know, season, you know, negative five. And Look like, my know. Warhammer Warship. <laughs> exactly. It's like, there's none of that. You know, again, like, you'll, you'll have people who, like, you can tell, like, they're officers and you know, they might, you know, throw out orders a little more than, than like, a, you know, a corporal or something like that. But, yeah, it's but, like yeah, yeah. There's no like you know, Grand Pooba. It's like just throw throwing his dick around, you know, because he's been. You know what? Though, what's so dope about a system like that is that there could be somebody that just got enough accommodations, and they're like they're at Colonel, and it's like the second you see that. Oh yeah, you're like you did a lot of fucking good shit to get there. What do you need me to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and from what oh. I've gotten, it's very much that mentality throughout the game of like, yeah, again, as with any online game, you always find assholes. But 
for the majority, it's very much like, hey, what can I do to help? You know, it's like, you know, especially from the Lodgy side, like that. That's like that's like the Lodgy motto is like, what can I do to help? What do you need in the front? That's my shit. Like, I'm and, so pumped on this. And you can be you can absolutely be the hero being Lodgy, like never, never having fired a bullet type of thing, being the conscientious, conscientious uh, objector. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you roll in with like a, a, you know, a truck full of like grenades and rifles and like people are cheering on as your truck's driving into the into the bunker like, yeah, he's got our supplies we got this we're gonna hold them off dude my heart's pumping my wiener's heart i want to play this game <laughs> oh my god that's amazing that's amazing yeah and, and, and you know it, it's and you, and you can see like you know, like doing logic runs specifically is like the best way to kind of like i guess say farm you know the compliments because it automatically throws it out to everyone as soon as you dump it into the bunker it's like hey this person has brought all these supplies do you want to uh, do you want to you know upload them essentially and so you'll see like ding 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 ding, ding. <laughs> it's like Dude, that is okay so i want to talk a little bit sure you know we we've talked about how there was that mass exodus from wow to final mm. fantasy 14 mm. mm-hmm. and how many many people stuck with final fantasy 14 sure and as somebody who's played it now for about a year off and on like this game gives me very similar vibes in that the people that designed it wanted to reward working yes. together. Yes, very much so. And and reward the people that may only be able to contribute an hour, but they give it their all in that hour and can do something, and you get props for that. Like A good example with Final Fantasy XIV, as you go through, you can solo a majority of it. And you'll get to points in quests where you have to do what are called duties. Very minor raids. Like, the longest I think I've ever played in a dungeon is maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Which is mad respect from me. Because I remember, fucking fuck do I remember some of those EQ2 ones. Where we were up from like 10 in the, at night to fucking 1 in the morning. Um, I just... What I love about it is, like, if you're a really high-level character and you take someone lower on the ladder, like me, that, you know, to run a dungeon, it rewards you for doing that. Like, yeah. it gives you, the higher-level person, a nice chunk of experience for helping out the community. Mm -hmm. Like, EQ2, you could do that. I remember... You just wouldn't get shit for it because you outleveled the dungeon. But what this does is it like it lowers your level to be around that person, but you still have a lot of advantages from your equipment. So mm -hmm. it's like you're still a badass. You can't be completely careless, but like, yeah, you can be that fucking experienced mercenary and help people out. Final Fantasy fourteen does so many things like that that just encourages cooperation. And when I hear something like Foxhole, where it's like. I can be the guy with the truck full of grenades and like, hey, yo, I hear y'all needed some blow blows. <laughs> and like, it helps out. You get rewards from that, even if it's just symbolic thumbs up. Like, that's awesome. Like, mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand why more games don't do this. Like, like, oh God, you look at WoW. WoW is bleeding subs. Especially sure. now that it's like fucking f frat boy molesty house. Yeah, right. Um, but like they were bleeding subs before that. Like they have nowhere near the player base they had even five years ago. And it's like you look at what it's still doing, and it's so easy to see why. Aside from fucking women fighting dragons with a fucking tissue paper bottom outfit and, uh, you know, a rubber band for a shirt. Um, and it, you know, it sounds stupid, but like, yeah, you, you learn a few things as a father of daughters, like why the hell wouldn't a woman on the front line want to wear the fucking sparkly, super spiky tank armor that <laughs> everyone else has. Right. You know, it, it, whatever. But and there's other things, too, like if you, I mean, the last I played with it, if we were high level and we grouped up with somebody, 
it was pretty much a waste of our time. Like we'd get no experience for it because we were just walking somebody through it. And they wouldn't get experience for it. That's what I forgot. In Final Fantasy XIV, if somebody higher level than you like that joins you in a duty and like leads you through, you get more experience for that. Mm-hmm. So like you as the lower level player not only get the, the experience for completing it, but you get a bonus because I don't know, you grouped up or something. I don't know what the hell the reason is, but it's genius. But yeah, no, I, I Foxhole is definitely uh definitely in my download queue from when we're done. Yeah, like I said, it, it, you know, if you like the you know, an RTS style gameplay and uh, well, it's, I mean, like, it's, it's say RTS maybe is a bad, mis- maybe more like, uh, you know, I, I say isometric, but you can move the camera around, but you know, kind of okay. Diablo esque slash RTS, okay, you know, uh, MMO style. Because again, like, it, it's kind of combining a whole bunch of stuff that's very, very unique. That it's like, I can't recall like an RTS being, you know, in an MMO setting. Like, I can't remember the last one, you know, wow. So, no, I really want to check this out. So I, I'd say it's fairly unique, but at the same time, you know, it, you know, it, it, I think overall, let's see, I'm, now I'm curious what the Steam numbers are. Granted, they, they probably exploded, you know, because I'm gonna say it's like it's it. They're they're very respectable, <laughs> very respectable. It's like seventeen thousand very positives. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. The the, the rating alone, and yeah. So it's hitting about five thousand players. Uh, you know, on average, uh, as its peak, so it's yeah. actually it's actually doing quite healthy. Um, yeah, overall. no, I'm, I'm gonna go check that out. That's awesome. And, and yeah, I think they, I want to say they release, I say relatively recently released, uh, kind of like a not an expansion, but a update. Um, but yeah, like I, I'd say, like if if this in any way piques your interest, like it's probably worth checking out. Oh yeah, uh, there. You don't like have to like, like oh, it's hilarious because. Else. Yeah, it's, it's 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 hilarious because it's like I have almost no interest in Battlefield, and where it's like I'm like I'm like all in on Fox. <laughs> no, but I I totally get why, dude. Like, yeah, I, I, we'll get to that later. But yeah, yeah we'll yeah, yeah. have a chat about FPSs. Um, <laughs> forewarned, this sounds dope too. Oh yeah, uh, uh, this is I think recently went into early access release i think some semi recently uh mm-hmm. but yeah th- think phasmophobia except it's now with mummies and curses you know you know it's almost like straight out of the mummy hey, how yeah. much is that one uh i think it's like 20 bucks and uh, right and it's in the cart <laughs> and there you go and even has a little bit of pvp if you want it and uh it, it's not what you think it's you're, you're you're not playing against randos basically if you die you have an option to go through two doors you can go through the door that's helpful and you can try to help your other fellow archaeologist uh trying to put things into a museum or you can go the other out and turn into the mummy and try and eat them that is fucking genius <laughs> so it gives you something a little more to do i'd say than phasmophobia where you, you can yeah i, I think quasi help around and i have yeah. to stay quiet on microphone <laughs> exactly it's like you can you can only help your teammates if they ask you questions and you can like you know Ooh. trip you know, trip sensors or throw a book you know type of thing yeah, yeah, or this yeah. actually gives you something to do um that's cool that's it's cool. It, I, yeah i would love to see it fleshed out a little more again it's it's still early access so there's not a lot of maps and and variations right, right, but, but that's a but it's the same it's vein. As Phas- yeah. If you like phasmophobia, you probably will like forewarned. It's I'd say it's a little more spoopy because it is like crazy dark. And again, you, you, you actively have like the mummy, you know, AI, the AI mummy hunting you like almost all the time. Like you're not piece of shit. That yeah, it's not a case of like, Oh, it's like, you know, phasmophobia is like eventually you get to the point where it like hunts you. Whereas in, in the mummy, it's like you get to a point no, and like yeah, you you're, you're running for, yeah, you're running for the mummy. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, goddamn Nick always getting me to spend money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just spend that money. <laughs> hey, spend those ducats. We only got one life. <laughs> um. So what are you been playing? <laughs> So I have been, uh, like I said, I, I put uh, a Pathfinder uh, uh, to rest for now. Uh, and it's not, like I said, not out of bitterness. I just, it needs a little bit more time. Yeah, just wait for polish. Yeah, it just needs a little bit more polish for someone like me anyway. Um, I already started a new save and I'm playing with that, uh, going down a different mythic path just to see what's different. 
And it's amazing how uh, incredibly different that playthrough already is just in the first opening chapter. Mm. Just by consciously making different decisions to be a different kind of hero. Man, like, it's easy for me to see why that game has, you know, some of the bugs that it does. Because their decision tree must literally be an entire floor of walls covered if they wrote it down on paper. Like, in microscopic print. (laughs) It's the only (laughs) way I can put it. It's just enormous. So I'm totally cutting it slack because I really think it is a genius RPG. So I'm letting it rest. Um, I've gone back into... uh, I've never really... uh, In full disclosure, I never really stopped playing the Legend of Heroes series, which um, Mm. I've I've gushed about. Uh, I've been playing Trails of Cold Steel 2. Um, I beat the first one, like I said, between jobs. Um, Cold Steel 2 is just now opening up, where I have the certain technology of something that's usually on water, but now goes in the air, and I can go anywhere I need to uh, in the world, in Chapter 2, basically. Uh, Which is super, super cool, and it's opened up a lot of non-linear story potential, and it just, again, shows me what a genius... uh, semi unsung series this is because it's definitely picked up enough traction to where they're bringing previous games to the series uh remastered and translated to English that were only in Japan. So that's super cool. So I was playing that and I uh at the uh, recommendation from some of my uh, coworkers um they said, you know, do you have uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky which is on GOG and it's a very early entry into the series. Pretty much the first one I think we ever saw over here. And they said it's really important <clears throat> that you play those. And then maybe find the translated uh, versions of the ones that are coming out in a year or two that are getting remastered um, you know, in the internet tunnels. Uh, and play them beforehand because once you get to Trails of Cold Steel 3, there's a shit ton of callbacks that are really awesome that you just won't appreciate. So it's like, shit, all right. So I'm I'm playing through Trails in the Sky uh, on my lunch breaks, and, like, maybe after the kids go to bed or and the wife goes to run errands or something, you know, and goes to run some errands, I'll sit and play this one. And goddamn, dude, this fucking game's got to be maybe 15 years old at this point, and I'm hooked! Nice. It's like, it's like, uh, did you ever play, like, uh, talking, like, PS1, like, Star Ocean, the second story, or Grandia? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you play this. Like, you get the graphics. Like, that's the graphics. Yeah, that, that level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Solid, solid, solid storytelling. And cool mechanics. And uh, it's a very early iteration of the series. So, like, the combat's not as in-depth as it is in Trails of Cold Steel, which I adore. I love the combat in that game. This one's not as bad. Or not I don't mean to say not as bad. It's not as in depth, but it, it's it's good, it's fun, it's a really good JRPG romp with a great story and an awesome cast of characters. And it's it's just like its successors in that, you know, I, I said on here before Trails of Cold Steel was the slowest of slow burns. It's like watching uh Dances with Wolves or <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, or, Wyatt, Space Odyssey. <laughs> or nah, no, nah, that's that's way too fucking slow. It's like Dance of the Wolves <laughs> or Wyatt Earp. Like Wyatt Earp's okay. a good example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, it has a slow start, but eventually it, it's it's a know, gets, slow gets pace, but a constant, constant build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that pace just picks up. Maybe chapter, you know, the earliest section was two steps, three steps at a time. Then the next section is four, and then the next section is five. Like, it's it's a builder, a constant builder, and then you get to a point where the line is crossed, and you're like, I can't fucking stop! <laughs> and you just have to know what happens next. You care, about, and I think the advantage of these games, it really shows the power of story and good characters, but because it's a slow burn... You're spending so much time with these characters where you're seeing them in the beginning in their normal 
everyday life and perception of what their life is and their perception of others. But as you go through the story, everyone starts realizing, you know, maybe the prejudices they had were unfounded or maybe they thought this person was something because of the way that they've lived and they start learning like, no, like you, you, even you as a player, we looking at a character like, man, you are a fucking aristocratic asshole brat. And then like a chapter later, you're like, I like you. Let me get <laughs> the best toy to make sure you got everything you need. Like you just, it, it does things story wise in the, in the legend of hero series that I've never seen anywhere else. Like you, like someone will say, what Saiken Densetsu has 106 characters. Yeah, cool. And the game maybe focuses on 20 of them and the rest are just window dressing. Like, this focuses on a class at a military academy of like, we'll say like maybe 30 characters and not all of them are playable. It might be more than 30, might be closer to 50. Wow. And at this point, maybe 25 are playable. And but you you interact with the other ones so regularly and the way the first game made you do these field assignments you're playing with different characters each chapter purposely um and it's done in a really genius way like a teacher is forcing you to work together with the other people you may not have wanted to and you're forced into these field studies together where even the main characters like I don't want them along <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just super cool and it, and the earlier games in the series, while not in a school setting, still have that same pace, that same build, and that same in-depth world that I'm really digging. Uh, so I've been playing the hell out of that. And then I've been playing on my lunch break, uh, S- Story of Seasons, unless, you know, Abby's awake, then I'll go play with her. But uh, stories of Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. Hmm. And it's my understanding that these are PC and Switch translations of Harvest Moon, which, uh, throw it all together, if you play Stardew Valley, it's more Stardew Valley. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And totally awesome, for me, totally zen, same kind of thing, got a farm, got a village, got people to get to know, you know, quests to do for the town, or, or errands to do for the town, mines to explore, um, and I don't know, like, I I never thought I'd get into those games, but ever since Stardew Valley came out in 2016, like, those kind of games just do something for me. Like, I I love the little town of characters, the the ability to, like, kind of build my own farm and, like, get my dog and explore the mines and repair things to get to new places. It's just, like, a weird zen that I can't quite explain, but I've, I've sunk a lot of hours into that and I've had a lot of fun with it and it's kind of a frontier uh, town frontier island kind of thing so it's makes for an interesting setting Uh, so I've been playing a lot of that and if you all I can say is uh, if you enjoy Stardew Valley uh, dude story of seasons is your jam just get it and if you need something new you'll lose way too much time into those it's good shit nice <clears throat> yeah i mean that's pretty much what i've been playing um lots of rpgs lots of that i i got to a point in diablo 2 resurrection where i realized i completely forgot how to do character builds got to diablo <laughs> <He's> like, <"Bruh!" laughs> and fucking got stomped and i was like all right i gotta kind of start over i don't have the energy for that right now uh, i will do that another time though uh, i still stand behind what i said it's a genius remaster it's a ton of fun Nice. And uh, I'll give it another try. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It's so much fun. Um, all right, let's go to releases. This has been a week of really good ones. Um, yeah, I mean, we've kind of we're getting into I think the what I'll refer as the holiday barrage. Uh, it really is, man. This week especially, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Obviously, the big one, uh, the big ones at the top for me, would be Far Cry 6. I actually haven't played it yet. I plan to after we're done here. Um, mainly because, like I've read, they're like, yeah, it's it's more of like what you have in Far Cry 3, 4, and 5. Like, okay. base takeover and 
crazy weapons. It's basically if you like the past two Far Cry games, like you're gonna like this. Um, and what, what are you playing it on? Uh, Series X. Series X. Okay, okay so I, I'll be curious. How do, you know? How will that look versus kind of how they were advertised at E3? Because I was always like one thing, like watching all the stuff. At it didn't E3. look great at E3. Yeah, yeah, it looked like a generation old, right? It did. I and I again, I say this with. I have not even turned this game on yet. I bought it yeah. the day it came out, and then got sucked back into Legend of Heroes. Uh, yeah, because my brother-in-law came up for the weekend, <laughs> and I was about to queue that up, and I just forgot how much he hates FPS. He's like, "Yo, you think you can, like, save that till I leave?" And I was like, "Fuck, all right, dude." And then we just played RPGs all weekend. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but, but uh, I'd be curious on like, how does it look? Like, is it was it a case of like Ubisoft just kind of like you know lowering the bar a little bit, or I don't know. It, does it actually look like that? I'm curious. It, if I could say like of any criticism I've I've or any review I've read, I, I have not heard a single one against the graphics. Okay. So that'll be interesting to see. Um so yeah, I'll check it out. I'll probably check it out tonight when we're done here and we'll we'll see how it goes. Word. Uh one that I've had an unexpectedly shit ton amount of fun with is Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. It is a Smash clone. And is it this has... on Switch or uh Nope. Series nope. X. Series X again, okay. It has SpongeBob. It has the Ninja Turtles. It oh, wow. has, um, oh Christ, I can't. Nigel and 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 the girl with the unibrow, like. Oh, uh, of, Bob's from Bob's Burgers, right? Uh, no, no. I don't think that was Nickelodeon. That's Fox. Oh, is this Fox? Okay. Ugh. Uh, Invader Zim. I could play as Invader Zim. Ah, oh, okay. Um, it's. But what it is, like, there's been a lot of Smash clones. This one probably comes the closest to a competitor where every character plays quite differently and in ways that make sense. And every character is great if you know how to play them. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun just picking that one up, playing it with my kids. My kids, it, it's so funny. They don't know half of these shows. They know SpongeBob. <laughs> Um, like I had to look up so it's like like some of these I do recognize I see some uh uh oh what is that oh it's from um oh dang it I used to watch it way back in the day Rugrats Rugrats, Rugrats yeah stuff, Reptar yeah. Reptar's in there yeah I see that and they're yeah. gonna do they I know they say they're gonna do DLC so I would expect to see uh uh what's his face uh Chucky and and uh, mm, who's mm. the main character I can't even think of his name uh. Tommy Pickles, right? Tommy, Tommy yeah, Pickles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I can see that happening. Um, I've got Doug and okay, okay, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can, I can recognize yeah. some of these. <laughs> Toast, you know, Mr. Toast from Friends Step. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Mr. Toasterman. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a okay. lot of fun. The boards are really cool. Like, it's probably the best Smash clone. And even like somebody on Kotaku was like, Smash better watch out hanging up the badge right now because this <laughs> one might be the next thing. And it's, I can agree with that. Like, this is a really great start for a new series on that kind of fighter brawler thing. Um, my, you know, if I had a complaint right now, like, Smash, you, you unlock a ton of characters, but they also have right. 20 years of fucking characters to go on. Yeah, I there don't... Is, it's like, yeah, how vast of a library... I mean, yeah. right, it's Nickelodeon, uh, you know, I'm sure there's much they can type into, but I mean, to your point, like, you know, it's like, how many of these are recognizable to, you know, kids, you know, today, you know, being... Well, it's know, one of those, they, like, they need to strike a balance, because, like, yeah, I want to play as Mark Summers. <laughs> some double dare and not just double dare mark summers but throwing my water coffee cup at burt reynolds on letterman mark summers i want that to be his special move <laughs> throwing some pies but uh no it's it's a really good start for a different brand of smash clone it's done really well graphics are great plays great frame rates great controls are great um I, I've enjoyed that. I was really surprised by how good that was. Um, so there's that one. The next one I bought, which would be my spoopy October game, mm. uh, is Alan Wake Remastered. Ah, uh, classic. Oh. Yeah, I'm curious to oh. see. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll be eager to see your take on this in terms of, you know, because I think we had commented on this uh, when we saw the E3 stuff. Like, it looked really 
sharp. But again, it was, it was gorgeous. It was that that shift of like I bought it and I played it for like two hours a day. Oh, was, nice. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. So like, it's like you know, because I think dude, lighting I, stood out to us me? is, is like, the biggest thing, right? Games. What's that? It, the, the lighting stood out as like the biggest thing for this, right? Oh my god, lighting is gorgeous. It's like, like real that was good. the one yeah, thing yeah. we couldn't do. We couldn't do that when that one released, and it was a little hokey. I mean, it was for its time. It was an impressive lighting effect. Now, it, oh, it, now really good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, great. It's not quite the same tech, but I, I, I you know, having played, you know, D two and yeah. obviously with Alan Wake, I, it's like you realize like they were cheating so to speak i think back then yeah of like, and they again. were doing this we talked about it yeah and they're doing yeah. the same thing on alan wake they were using yeah. lighting to limit your perspective uh because they just couldn't show you everything at once without yeah, the system grinding run, to a yeah hole. exactly so now it's like now the tech is caught up it's like now oh. they can do it justice you know absolutely gorgeous um and i i, I adore it like it's it's going to be my that's going to be my whiskey sipper at night when i just need a break from jrpgs uh, I my plan is to beat it by Halloween, uh, if I can. Um, ooh, excuse me. If not, I'll have to play it on uh, Extra Life Day. I think yeah, that would be a really go. good go. one. That'd be a really have, good wasn't one. there a DLC or expansion or something to it? Right? Yeah, it all comes with it. It all, all comes, comes okay, in the cool. remastered package, like a Game of the Year edition style. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I think it was only like thirty bucks. Like, if you want to play that one again, yeah. No, I was gonna say it's cheap. And if you want to play it again, like, oh, dude, it's so worth it. As soon as you get in the first 15 minutes, you're like, I'm back home in Bright Falls. This is so great. <laughs> I even watched, if you remember, um, they released that web series that was like the prequel to the game. Do you remember Bright he, Falls on YouTube? Oh, yeah. I kind of do recall. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was called like, you know, it was kind of like little vignettes on the town yeah. or, or like his book previous books or something like that right yeah yeah and it's kind of like opening this the the thing and then you'd play the game and it that was yeah. like a continuation yeah i watched it the other day and i'm like oh shit i'm so pumped <laughs> 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 so uh initial impressions i'd say with the first three hours um god damn what a fucking great game that is <laughs> um i just i really hope that the interest in the remaster will will warrant the sequel that everybody's been wanting who sure um but yeah no i'm loving it uh it's great uh the other one uh that came out uh, this week metroid dread oh yes um at least on the save point it's a, it's a bit divisive uh, oh just, okay well no the, my buddy josh has some really good criticisms on it of what he does not like and uh, I have not played it myself yet. My brother-in-law bought it on his Switch, and he played it uh, pretty much the entire time he was here. And I would just we were we were chilling on the couch. He'd play it, and I was drinking some beers, watching him. Uh, I love Metroid and Metroid-esque games. Always have Symphony of the Night, you know, all mm -hmm. that shit. Yeah. Um, it's totally that vein. It, it takes everything that those games do well, and it it just runs with it. There's some new mechanics that. I know Josh and, and some others are not into, and it has to do with these like Emmy Sentinel robots where you have to like activate this cloaking device. It's a stealth sequence is basically what it is. Oh, and interesting. There's a tricky counter to it that if you get right, you can get away, but otherwise you're, you're dead and you gotta go uh, back through it again. Okay. So a little punishing. Back through that room or whatever. Um, so I could see where it'd be frustrating, but I don't know. My brother-in-law Ross just, fucking figured it out and and was going through this game like a motherfucker and he is like the metroid fan of metroid fans and he's the kind of person that'll punch you in the throat if you say the word metroidvania like, <laughs> no the game's like fucking metroid and you fucking respect that it's not a metroidvania he's like castlevania took from metroid <laughs> like, right. metroid he's was right. progenitor yeah you're right all right but no and and he is absolutely head over heels for the game has had a lot of fun with it this weekend. Ooh, good day to me. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, but it, uh, I would recommend it just based on what I watched. Like, if you're into Metroid and, oh, yeah, yeah. and, and you don't it, mind the stealth sequences, like, this is the Metroid I want. I know a lot of people want another Metroid Prime, and I'm sure it translates beautifully. It's just, when I play a game like Metroid, I want that fucking old-school 2D... 
Yeah, the side scrolling, you know, you know unlocked zones. I yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell you why. Uh, maybe I'm old, but I just love that. Like Breath, uh, uh, not Breath, Ritual of the Night, Bloodstained was like one of my favorite games of that year. Yeah, like that just that delivery works for me. And, and you know, it still works e- even outside of Metro. Again, like Carry On is like that's why I love Carry On so much. Fucking you know, Carry On! I need sim- a new Carry On game already. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like it's like just, just give me more of that stuff. And it's like you know, there's plenty. <sighs> Oh, like other examples, uh, what was it Shadow, not Shadow Force, oh, well, Shadow Complex, way back in the day. Shadow like, Complex was a like, good one. That yeah. was a fantastic one. Yeah. So it's like, like the fact that you know, you know, again, Metroid has returned to its Metroid roots. I think it's great. You know, because you know, it's, uh, nothing wrong with Prime. Like I enjoyed Prime, but it's I enjoyed like Prime. But it's but... like it's good to see them return Metroid to kind of its roots. You know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And like. It just shows how much that delivery still works and works beautifully. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. And then the other one, we got to talk about it this week, is New World. Ah, uh, yes. I, okay. Full disclosure. Have not played it. It's a thirty nine ninety nine price tag, which is reasonable. Sure. And it's been tempting because I'm not seeing the drop yet and a shitty mmo at least with amazon's track record had a two-day drop ratio (laughs) (laughs) um i'm gonna give it another week but it's one of those like aside from server queues and it sounds like they're getting that under control they fucking better considering they run half the goddamn world yeah, I, I think we're we may have been talking about this last time, but yeah, like the launch was like absolutely rough. I mean, it, it, I'd say standard fare for a normal game company, but it's like it's it, you know this is an Amazon based company once, like, but I uh, almost every company in the world right now is using Amazon web servers and <laughs> Amazon exactly. web services, and you can't fucking do this. <laughs> yeah, and I I think uh, I can't remember if we talked about this last time, but I know I've had this conversation where like I. Th- you know, my outside perspective, my, my, it's like totally noob to this, but again, having gone through like the, the game world, it's like, again, if, if this had been any other, you know, studio outside of Amazon, it's like, okay, that, that looks normal. Like they just, like once again, they didn't factor for the huge influx of players on day one. And here we yeah. are, but again, yeah. they've, they've ironed it out. But that being said, it's like, yeah, you're right. This is Amazon. Like they, it's like, they should have seen this coming type of thing. Like you but, run people it, i've worked for <laughs> <laughs> but i'm thinking it's a case of you know the, the corporation being so big that it's like it you know yeah. the gaming division is all by itself do they get help from amazon Absolutely, probably right but, so. like, but they don't I have feel- they don't have the direct vein to it you know it's, it's not you know similar you know it's much like twitch twitch is part of amazon but yeah. they don't get the Amazon development overhead and all that kind of stuff. Like they're just, they're just and on their they own don't little get the island. Amazon security, which we'll get. To <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, like they're on their own little island out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm, I'm getting the feeling that the Amazon gaming studio is the exact same way where it's just like, they're on their no, little absolutely, island and absolutely they, is. they can call me, you know, they can call on the bat phone, but it's like, you know, you better make sure it's, it's a good reason. And I guess this is not a good reason, uh, but again, well, they, I, they, they've but I think out, it you know? might, I think they might be realizing that because yeah. the interest in this game is not going away. It's yeah. still, you know, a lot of people wanting to play it, exactly. which again is, is a, a, a direct turnaround from like the launch of something like crucible, which is probably why mm-hmm, Amazon mm-hmm. was like, yeah, let us know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I might end up checking it out. It's still not something I could see playing. I, I think I'll play Foxhole for a fuck ton longer. <laughs> so um, from yeah. what I've gathered, I'm not, I haven't picked it up myself either. But again, I still it's like it's enjoyable to watch. Like you watch the PvP aspect and all that stuff. From what I've gotten, you know, talking with everyone else, like they're using it as filler until something else comes along is mm-hmm. is is the, you know, the the tone I'm getting. So it's not it's not okay. bad. It's it's a nice tight over. Uh, if you're really into PvP, like that's your bread and butter. Yeah, but that's it, not it me. seems to be just like it's it's the new hot rest right now, and it's and it's not that bad. It seems to be quite functional. It, again, it seems like the worst thing about it has been the queue times, and again, they've ironed that out, so it's kind of like you know calmed down a little bit. Um, so again, I 
I would like to see them succeed because that means like, okay, maybe the Amazon yeah, we got a new start. player in the market. You yeah, and I are always all about yeah, that. Yeah, can put something else like we, you know, we talked about like, you we know. We need somebody better than Activision Blizzard. Right <laughs> yeah, now. Like, right. It's please. like, they were, they were teasing a Lord of the Rings game coming from Amazon. So maybe if they still have the they license. that. Yeah, it's canceled, but you know, maybe it's like okay, maybe it could be revived. But they are you know, making a Lord else. of the Rings series, and if they fuck that up, yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. yeah. Put, put a put a fork in it if that's the case. <laughs> they, they're not the ones doing Wheel of Time, too, are they? Uh, I think that's Netflix. I think Netflix is doing that. Who's doing Wheel of Time? Because I saw that the, the preview for that dropped. I don't know if it was after our. It, it was last soon episode. afterwards. Yeah, it was soon afterwards. I think that trailer looks. Fucking it look, great! It looks good. Oh, I can't wait to watch that. But before we get there, we got Dune, uh, and I'm oh, fucking yeah. counting down. When, on is my that little... is that end of the month or when is it? Uh, it's in like two weeks. Two weeks. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Dune uh, movie. It is. Oh, a week and five days. Oh, there you go. Oh, I'm gonna. T- I can't I'm gonna wait. Dune. That looks fucking. So I, I actually good. ended up rewatching the the old nineteen eighty version. I forgot how oh, trippy I, I, that was. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, it's fucking David Lynch. It's so out yeah, there. Yeah, it's so. Uh, it's as, like whoa. As, as somebody who may or may not be on the Pennsylvania medical program, it's a great uh, medicinal herb movie. It always <laughs> has been. <laughs> no, it. Uh, you know what though? Where I think that movie really got it right, and a lot of people always give that movie shit. But if you never read the books, a lot of the the Herbert Dune books um, take place in thought. Yeah, like, inner, you, yeah, the inner dialogue. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of inner dialogue and inner thought, and the Lynch movie really went all in on that. Like the character will be on screen, and you'll hear them like narrating over you know over the movie in their head, and it yeah. was like. That was a risky thing, man, especially back then. And, and they just ran with it. And it's not it's not bad. Like I, there are many ways I think the sci fi miniseries, uh, this the special effects were shit, but it was a <laughs> lot closer, a lot right. closer to the story, I think, than the Lynch movie was. But I think the Lynch movie nailed the characters. Mm hmm. Uh, what has me so stoked for the new one is it it really feels like they're going to nail both. Yeah, you know, kind of, you know, obviously it, it's difficult to, you know, because it, it, like how many books is it? It's several, like what, four well, or five? The, 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 the movie itself is only, only going to be the first book. Oh, okay. So, okay. Frank Herbert's Dune. Gotta it's going to be Dune. Okay. So it's going to be, you know, Atreides gets Arrakis. Yep. Fuck you with spoiler alerts, y'all. This shit's been out since the 70s. If you haven't <laughs> yeah, read it right. by now, you aren't even interested in this shit. You're in trouble. But it's basically going to go all the way up to where Paul liberates Arrakis and okay. you know, has that conference at the end where, like, he's just, like, looking at the Emperor's daughter, like, hey, right. new loot, new rules. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think it's I think it stops there. Um, it sounds like there are plans to continue it, but we'll see how this does. Yeah, I heard I heard rumors like yeah, apparently it's, it's it's getting enough positive you know that you know that they're looking to make more it's like interesting yeah, yeah. Okay. and it's it's gonna do fucking great yeah yeah like that's yeah anyway all right let's move on to the news because we move have a on. lot to cover. oh yeah uh, um the first one's just a laughing point because we talked about this <laughs> on the last episode <laughs> fucking tommy tellerico um <laughs> in television is getting into the pyramid grifter scheme that is NFTs. Uh, there was a great story oh, about Lordy. that. There was a great story about that this week, where somebody was selling these like shitty gorilla images of like mummy gangster gorilla, whoever. Like, I feel bad because the artist that did it, I think, did a good job, but they never got paid, and the guy that collected all the NFTs just fucking took the wallet and ran. Oh yikes! Which is exactly what these things are. Like, I'll put it to y'all this way. Now, I know everybody down south might get excited and slightly hard in the genitals. Um, but if Donald Trump was to run an NFT, or run a crypto, I'm sorry, crypto coin, it would be an NFT. Uh, because they're they're just worthless. They're worthless. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, people think they're buying gold. 
And I feel like it's people like grandma, like, oh, crypto. Oh, this is crypto. I'm going to buy that. That's what your hip kids are doing. (laughs) Fucking hell, dude. So in television is selling NFT games for their, what is it, their Friendster or Friendly, whatever whatever that console is uh, that Telerico is doing, which is basically a slightly newer in television that's playing games that are out on mobile and then some original ones. Um... And they're NFTs. They're selling games for a console that's not even out yet. No, Nick? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that tell you as someone who is a elder gentleman in the states of games like myself? What happens when a console is selling games for the console that's not out yet? Uh Oh, I okay. can't remember the name of it, but uh, there was that like super console system that was going to be like... <laughs> PlayStation and Nintendo, and it's like, yeah. it's like mm. it became an online streaming service and died in a fucking month. It's like Nintendo's. Are you sure about that? It's like, mm. <laughs> oh my god! Like that just becomes the new. I'm trying. You had me thinking. What the fuck was the name of that? Like Eju or Evu? Oh, Evu. That sounds right. Oh, I can't even remember. Like it, it, it was just it was la- it was laughable as soon as you heard about it. It's like it's gonna play every single game ever. Like, every game. Are you sure about that? Because that's never let's, happened in the history of ever. Let's face it. The only company I even slightly believe that from to where I might have put pre order money down is the fucking Valve handheld. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, PC hands down is the only "quote unquote" console that can play everything because everything has to be developed on the console. Now that that being said, obviously it's like, yeah, you're not going to be playing your Nintendo games on on the PC. But for the most part, it's like you know, especially nowadays, you're you're seeing a lot of eventually, yeah. yeah, you know, after the exclusives are done, like Sony is getting a lot of their stuff on PC these days. Like you can play. Yeah, everybody's moving to PC, um, man. What is Switch? it? Uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is now on PC. Uh, several oh, of the other like dude. PlayStation stuff are coming eventually now to PC. Now, granted, it, it's years later, but it's happening. But it, it comes to PC yeah. because there's it, a market there. But yeah, like as soon as I was like, like this. Co- now, granted, I don't think the Intellivision thing, but again, still, still the same principles. Like, yeah, you're selling I mean, games that, for Intellivision console. is not selling you a game; it's selling you a crypto for a game. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. See, like, yeah, like I don't know. Please. Like, I don't, I feel like the old man in the room is like, I just don't get it. What are these crazy kids up to? But it's like, I do not uh, like, it, like I don't know. Just, there's something about like crypto and all that. It's like, I understand the concept, but it's like, I no, I, I totally understand the concept. The, but the I don't the get it. Is. I don't get it as a, as a currency, an active currency. You know, maybe in the, like... maybe in the far future when we're all plugged into the into the matrix, you know, it's like I'll get it then. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yes, Bitcoin is worth tens of thousands right now but i still feel like so was the death of superman when everyone that brought the, the <laughs> seventy-five thousand yeah. million copies of it yeah. that came out because they thought they had gold um yeah anyway so they're fucking doing their thing uh I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit sure um as we were talking about when it came to twitch and security mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this story just gets really fucking interesting too there was a massive Massive leak of the entire source code of Twitch. And this wasn't like 10-year-old source code. This was like pretty much live. It, it, yeah, it was It was like literally everything, apparently. Pretty much everything got leaked. So, uh, you know, a public safety announcement. If you have a Twitch account that you even remotely use, like go change your fucking password now yeah yeah. if if you're somehow under a rock or something yeah change your password if you stream change your yeah now they should have already changed your stream code they did that for me already um yeah everything fucking leaked and as i like to tell everyone if something has two-factor authentication turn the damn thing on (laughs) oh fuck yeah dude i i have fucking two-factor authentication on everything now oh yeah yeah it's like yes it's a pain in the ass and i I tell this everyone's like yes it'll be a pain in the ass because it's one more thing you have to plug in but my goodness, does it really help with but your security? My God, like, dude, and I just, I see your dad sitting in a chair right now. He's not a smoker, but if he was, he'd have the, cig- <laughs> he'd have the cigarette holder, the long one, and go, my work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Glenn. I never forgot one lesson. <laughs> That's right. 
it's like it's like it, is it you know can it be hacked absolutely but it's it, you know it, it's extremely it's difficult much much fucking harder it's yeah. it's basically you have to be a target not a casualty of a blast yes exactly so yeah no get your two-factor authentication change your password change your stream code do your shit because literally everything now it gets interesting did you see the kotaku article you might even see it because you're on twitch a lot more than me mm -hmm. uh do you see bezos made an appearance pretty much everywhere in the no, past I, day or two I, no i missed that i missed that what was that oh, what happened there wow Wow! All right, so hold on. Give I've been, I've been in the foxhole, man. I've been fighting the war. <laughs> I'm going to be right there fucking with you in a few. Um, This gets really fucking interesting to me because you and I, you know, we've had to play detective mm -hmm. uh, in our jobs, especially security detective. Yeah. I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste the link in our retro rents channel okay. for, the, mm -hmm. for the casters. Now, I'll sum it up for you. Uh. Bezos is like shocked face image <laughs> has been plastered all over Twitch on like, if you go to the grand theft auto five game page, like the link for the game page where you click on it and you can click follow and then you'll follow a bunch of streamers playing grand theft auto five. Um, if you look very faintly in the background of the banner for it on the page that I sent you, Kotaku screen capped it. It's Bezos is wide-eyed freaking out, and this has been <laughs> all the fuck over Twitch since Friday. And this tells me two things as somebody who has investigated fraud and breaches. So this comes hot on the heels of the security breach, right? So somebody with access to all the fucking source code leaked it. Um, yep. and because of the freshness of the code to me this is one of two things no it's really only one thing to have access to code that new and to be able to leak it I would my first reaction is it's somebody that's working there but I would have thought I was crazy until Friday when Bezos' image is popping up on their site <laughs> So now we're talking about the live Twitch yeah. and the live Twitch assets are getting subtle takeovers. This is something that I don't think I've seen before where there's been a major leak. As far as we know, nobody's been held responsible. And yet we're still seeing signs that, I mean... You you work now in this industry longer than I have as far mm -hmm. as security, but like to me, this is this is somebody inside. Like uh, I'd say <laughs> yes and no. Like uh, like it's probably a combination of uh, I say a little bit of above in terms of like there's probably a bit of so, you know, like a lot of stuff that happens today is very much social engineering based. It's oh for it's, sure for like, sure. Like I I feel like that is a bigger thing these days than ever. Uh, granted, yeah, there's still like you know, you know, intrusion detection and you know, the, you know, finding finding the holes feel that like way. The timing, the timing to me is so suspect. Yeah, but but I this uh, not on this level necessarily, but uh, the website I should say. So you know, obviously, leak, leak source code is kind of rare, but we had that. There was the instance back uh, last year with CD Projekt oh, yeah, Red. Yeah, yeah. They had yeah. their their now the grant. I don't think it was everything, but it was a lot of like their base source code for you know from their files and. You know, apparently yeah, but this was like everything from Twitch this, this, as of yeah, this, this week. This was huge. And I mean, then two days the later, one. their site is hacked. Yeah, so site hacking, I feel, is a little lower level. But again, they, they could have easily used, like someone could have looked at the source code and say, aha, here's that's a vulnerability. That's true, too. Yeah, that's true, too. Um, because like I, actually recently, I think like the Navy's like Facebook was recently hacked and they had a, you know, yeah, they were able to put up some stuff there. So again, this level of stuff, you know, the, the website, I should say, you know, taking over things specifically is a little more common. Uh, I'd say, you know, I say common in the sense of, you know, the hacking universe. Mm. Um, but, you know, it, it, it begs a lot of questions about the, the security levels in place to yeah. prevent these types of things. Cause, cause that's the thing. Like, Usually this is a case of like, okay, maybe they were able to look at the script and see like a vulnerability and, and, and you know, execute a script code and boom, they're sure. able to swap yeah, out yeah, a picture. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, the leak may have very much assisted with that. Yeah, um, no, that's true. I was going to say the timing is what interests me, but that makes yeah. that makes even more sense. Yeah, so I, I I I lean away from the inside job and more again like a combination like the leak, probably a combination of social engineering because maybe leak, social engineering and then just finding finding shit in the code that was leaked. Exactly, yeah. the more vulnerable side of a website, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like double pie in the face type of thing going on. It's yeah. like wow. you know what are they going to do about yeah 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 to say the least so it's like and i will say a rough week for facebook as well i didn't even put that on here oh oh yeah you're right you're absolutely right oh man like was it whole half a day or something like that uh longer than that i don't think i got on to like uh sometime that evening and not that i was well no that just might be that i wasn't checking uh which could be real because i work yeah, I mean, uh, like, I, I saw, like, it had gone down in the morning. It was like, okay, I'm guessing. Yeah, it went, down, it went down at, like, 11. And I knew it was something major when my mother-in-law called me at 4 and asked <laughs> if I was having a rough day at work. And was like, love you, Mom, but I don't work at Facebook. She goes, but, you know, to her point, like, our software hooks into them. Ah, uh, okay. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, it wasn't the greatest day, but I'm just glad I'm not working at Facebook. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Like, I'll tell you what, that was a long fucking day for uh, Facebook site reliability employees. That's all. I'm gonna say. <laughs> there was a lot, a lot. Somebody posted a great fucking analogy that was probably way more accurate than Facebook would have liked, where it was like they basically sent something out in the DNS server that said, "Oh, my server's not online," and it, it's kind of like. A, not a refresh, but something that happens if it's not done right, you can bring everything down, which is and what they did. And that's what it did, network. yeah. And uh, they're like, and that brought down, you know, that brought down their website, and then that brought down Instagram, but that also brought down their security system on site that communicates with the servers <laughs> so people can get in the fucking door. Yeah, they're like, yeah, I was, one, you know, kind of reading up and like, it's like, they're going to have to get a saw and you like, cut their way in. Like, they, we didn't, you know, like uh, the follow-up was like, didn't have to do that apparently, but just like, wow. I would say that's what they said. Uh, of my knowledge of lower networking technology, I wouldn't say it was terribly far fetched. <laughs> no, no, like it, it's certainly, uh, yeah, it's definitely within the realm of possibility. We should look at the picked up business of glass door repairmen, <laughs> uh, repairmen or women, locksmith in the area, <laughs> in the Palo Alto area. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, uh, um, and then my last news item before we move on to yours, sure, um. Uh, this is a sad one for me. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I saw kind of like your, your your replies to this. I didn't realize this was happening. I didn't either. Uh, and, you know, uh, bless the boys. That's just how they work. But their 180th, 180th episode of the Bad Fodder Figures is their last, at least their last, like, official podcast weekly episode. Right, like um, regular yeah, they're, what, you know, they might do a game night or, you know, an event here and there. But uh, Captain Mike, Matt, uh, Glovebox, and uh, Jeremy, Hoodie Ninja uh, are hanging. Well, Jer- Jeremy, and that's when I knew, that's when I fucking knew something was up. Jeremy came back. Jeremy's been gone for about a year and a half. Hoodie Ninja's been, uh, you know, just doing the life thing, man. And, mm-hmm. like, I pulled up the episode i didn't get to see the stream on wednesday um because they did like a special episode and i'm like oh fuck like wednesday this is gonna be great i just i between work and kids i never got to it and i started listening to it on friday and it got to this like i knew something was up when jeremy uh mike was like and jeremy has informed us he will be a he will now be a staple on every remaining Bad Fodder Figures episode, or <laughs> all the Bad Fodder fig- Figures episodes from here on out. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bamboozle get then, coming. And then they got to the news, and, and you know, Captain Mike, uh, you know, mentioned that they were they were hanging up the mics, you know, and Matt and... Eric, I think, is still going. I love my glove box. Glove box, my brother... I, I will always be a fan of Glovebox Gaming and your amazing arcade room that I think I posted in the Retro Rents channel at some point. 
Uh, if not, I will post it again tonight so everybody can see it. But god damn, Eric, you have the fucking game room I've always fucking wanted. And he's got it locked by biometrics, so his kids couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but now I, I just I wanted to take a minute, you know I already said it on Twitter. Um, I've been listening to the Bad Fodder figures. They kind of rebooted. I want to say around the same time we started, because uh, Mike, the host, was you know he he was the host for Gamers uh, in Beta. He was the host uh, or one of the people on the I think the Forty Cast. Maybe that was Matt. But Mike's been doing this for a long fucking time. And so has Matt. So has Eric and and, and Jeremy. And, um, like, Jeremy did Dad's Getting Grounded. Um, like, they, they, these guys are legit. And I hadn't really heard of them until we started off. And um, they might have tagged us or something. Like, I forget what it was. Because they knew, that was what, I think one of them knew Travis, uh, our old co-host, you know, for anyone that's been here for a long time. And um, I got really into them. Like, they were five episodes in or so on the new show. And I've been listening ever since. And um, they're a big reason, like, a big inspiration of why, you know, I really got into this. Because it was like, they did a really great show. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, this is they, this can be really fun. Like, if you're doing it for the right reasons, you know, chat with your friends. And just being naturally funny people, which Nick and I know we are, and we sh- you know, that's just who we are. But it it was just one of those, like, I've always really respected those guys. Mike used to call onto the show uh, quite, a, you know, every now and then. And he's the only one I ever knew that always said, gentlemen, how do? How do? I haven't heard that greeting in many years. My grandmother's dead now. But I always appreciated that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I, you know, and uh, like our our favorite caller, Fred French, um, I actually got in touch with him through the Bad Fodder Figure show. We were both regular callers on that show. And um, then Bad Fodder Figures would give us a plug once in a while. And Uncle Fred started calling and we had like a, a staple who hasn't fucking called us quite a while. The fuck, Fred? We still love you, though. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, they're hanging up the mics, and I just wanted to take a minute on this show to really say thank you. Uh, y'all really inspired me um, to keep doing this, um, and and you just you made a show that I always enjoyed, and I always wanted to at least make sure I was bringing the same energy and the same fun that y'all brought every week. Like, y'all do it every week. I don't know how the fuck you did that. It's very easy to see how you got to 180 and like, fuck it, I'm done. I think that's why I do a steady two weeks as much as I can. <laughs> um, but no, thank you, fellas. Uh, Eric, Mike, Matt, Jeremy. Um, y'all gave me a fucking wild ride of entertainment. I look forward to future game nights and anything y'all do. But I will really miss that fucking show. And um, if you haven't heard it, Mike, give us like a month or two before you take that shit down. Because you got to at least save the stacking paper episode. That is my fucking, that is like the hardest laugh I ever had in my life. I know I mentioned it on here, Nick, at one point. But like, they got into a, a conversation about like talking business. And Mike was talking to Eric and... You know, his wife has, a, a, you know, her own business. And they're like, what did you do this week? And, and Eric's, Eric's a, you know, he's a D.C. cop. If you listen to the show, like, that's not confidential. He, he, he works in the D.C. police force. And he's like, yeah, you know, John has been working. He's like, I've just been stacking paper all weekend, man. It's been fun. And Matt, the co-host, goes, you've been stacking paper. That sounds so much fun, just stacking up paper. And Mike's like, he's talking about money, Matt. And he goes, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Mike, if nothing else, if you save nothing else from that show, if you ever lose that fucking clip, I will cry. It will be a tragedy of a lifetime. Because just the surprise... Oh, I could listen to that clip a hundred times and piss my pants laughing. But yes, man salute, chugging a beer right now. Mm. Bad fodder figures. I will really miss you guys. Thank you. 
And I will hand the mic over to Nick for the next section of news that is nowhere near as sad. <laughs> well, then again, read the title. Hold on. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> it's time for Star Citizen Update again. It is... Uh, Record scratch. <laughs> uh, once again, it's October, which means Citizen Con uh, held virtually this time. Uh, this is oh really? Of... I'm surprised they didn't charge ten thousand dollar tickets for new shows. <laughs> yeah, in previous years, pre-pandemic, uh, basically they've held it every October. Um, it's kind of uh, when I think the Kickstarter first went live and whatnot. So they yeah. kind of held hold that as a Citizen Con. It's kind of like um, again their own little like personal convention and in, in kind <laughs> of like their media extravaganza in previous years. Uh, this year, uh, they held it virtually. Then you know they didn't want to go the in person route quite yet. They weren't quite ready for that. Uh, again, smart probably, move. Smart move. Smart move. I, I think. I think uh, you know the way things are looking. Uh, again, you know, knock on wood, and you know, hope it keeps going that direction. Things are turning around. I think by next year, you know, we're we're gonna yeah. get get back to a, 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 a good go to chance again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but uh. So they did it virtually, and just on just yesterday on Saturday, as we record to here on Sunday, mm. um, and it was, it was I'd say it's a very much more toned down because everything was kind of like pre-planned, and uh, they did have some live elements, uh, but for the most part, most of the um, uh, the what would what would have been like live panels were kind of like pre-recorded, you know, segments and whatnot, and it actually ended up I feel being a lot cleaner uh, and a lot yeah. more te- tempered. Uh, because in previous uh, Citizen Cons, it, it, you know... Boom, boom, explosion, developer it, cut. Boom, it, exactly. It's it very much like sizzle reels and like the most flashiest thing. I mean, you know, I forget which year it was. I want to say 16, 17, something like that. There was a sandworm uh, is scene of like, you know, it's like, oh, you're going to go out to this wreck. And then, you know, the sandworm comes out like Dune style. And it's like, Bruh! and we don't have the sandworm yet in game. So it's just like, you know, and a lot of people like, like to point to that. It's like, Oh, we still don't have sandworms, you know, <laughs> where's my dune tie in. Um, but it was, it was definitely a lot more tempered of like, most of what they showed, uh, I feel was a little more <laughs> realistic of what will be coming soon. As opposed to like, you know, super explosions, Michael Bay everywhere. Um, and they, they, <laughs> they kind of showed off the pyro uh, that what will be the second system called pyro. Um, yeah, Basically, uh, what we what we've had for the past several years has been called the Stanton system, where they've been testing basically all the single system mm. uh, mechanics and whatnot. Pyro will allow now for intra system mechanics, so that's your exploration, okay. that's your data running. Uh, there's still <laughs> salvage there, and it's going to be a lawless Smuggling, system. All that yeah, shit. exactly, exactly. Pyro is going to be a completely lawless system. Uh, right now, Stanton only has like a little section that's kind of like lawless. You know, it's basically an asteroid field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pyro, pyro will be completely lost. There, there will be no interdictions by the police or anything like that. Uh, it's basically controlled by gang factions. Uh, so it's going to be very yeah, much yeah. about that gang cool. gang uh, reputation and, you know, e- either being on their yeah. good side or that if you cool. piss them off, be prepared to shoot. Um, so it looks gorgeous. Like, you know, a lot of good stuff. Now, it, this isn't the first time they kind of like tease uh pyro but this is definitely a lot more scenery to a lot it. more detail than you've seen before yeah, exactly they kind of showed yeah. off a lot more of the planetary stuff uh like clouds look great like which is a weird thing to say i know but it's like you know it's like ooh. no 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 man good looking clouds can fucking blow a mind oh, in a game. oh yeah no doubt um they showed off more of the colony aspects uh they kind of showed it more in the npc aspect but this is like the foundation for the colony uh profession I say, mm-hmm. uh, granted, there, there's no like you you pick a profession. It's more like you just go out and do whatever. If it happens to be colonizing, yeah. that's what it is. Uh, but it very much reminded me of the old classic SWG oh, towns. I saw that sentence and I just had a fucking heart <laughs> Yeah, it's like, and I'm talking to several people like, yeah, that reminds me of Star Wars Galaxy. It's like, yeah, it's we like. We had a fucking colony, Nick. Oh, uh, yeah. Blitz, Geo, mm-hmm. everybody. It was like, I think it was out in Locke, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on Locke. Yeah. Yeah, and was, uh, uh. yeah, so I, I we didn't get to see the colonization gameplay, but they showed off a lot of like the buildings and like you know what it'll mm-hmm. look like. 
and it's like yeah this this looks awesome and like the way they, they kind of mix look and match like this game is ever going to release <laughs> well unfortunately like, i say the unfortunately and and again this goes into the like the tempered nature because all the previous status cons is always like this you know this thing you know not, you know they never right put a date the on, yeah yeah they never put a, a date on like the sandworm aspect so it's like yeah it's like although people like to point in and see like where are the sandworms like well they technically never said sandworms are arriving x it was always something else within the presentation would be yeah, yeah, arriving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the markets. Yeah. So so this one, there were no dates, but they did say Pyro arrives in version 4.0. So we at least have a version that they're saying okay, like so you're this, at 315. Yeah. And right. and I mean, who knows? Like with versions, I mean we could it could be 4.0 tomorrow. I mean, but... <laughs> it could be you know 95 iterations or 85 it, it, iterations. Exactly. It's not like you know, it's like oh, you know, 16, 17, it could be like 315 to 320 to 330. It could be 315 to 316 at the yeah, rate you, this game's going. You, you never know. Um uh, no, I, I would say, you know, again, they've been teasing Pyro since uh, 29, like 2019. They were like saying like by the end of 2020, we're, we're going to have Pyro. So I would, All you right, know, so by again, the time my we guess, have a new president. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, within the next four years, sure. I would say maybe, maybe we'll oh. see something next year, but who knows? You know, I just, you know, I, I think I mentioned this in the last one. Um you know, I I'm a, a technical project manager. Mm -hmm. in yeah, my, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. You you know about delays and I have worked, and... I I will say I worked with the TPM that is one of the people mainly responsible for the delivery of the initial uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Mm. He knows people that have been on there, and they're like, "Wow, that that shit's crazy town." <laughs> 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 But, you know, I, I want this to work. It sounds so stupid, but, like, those are my and your favorite kind of games. Like, Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Freelancer. I mean, Freelancer was bomb. The X games are, like, oh, yeah, the Black yeah. Art Heroin version of those. Um, and they're, you know... What this game wants to be is everything I want to play. Oh, yeah. And, um, and this may be me being a star citizen apologist, but it's just like, you know, ultimately we are getting stuff. I mean, like I said, the current yeah, version. No, no. And that's, yeah, the current version is three point. Like, yeah, like the, the three point one five just dropped actually with, you know, on the uh, uh, on the PU uh, persistent universe, which is kind of like the, the prelude to the yeah. live, the full live servers. Uh, but basically, they they just dropped the new medical system, it, which is absolutely hilarious because apparently you can OD on your meds That's awesome. <laughs> in the me, in the med center and get like totally high as all get out. <laughs> but, and, and, and to give everybody uh, uh, some context, I, I Nick is not a true believer gamer. The last game I would say I ever saw. That both of us get seriously into, and it's why we got a little starry, teary eyed. Was SWG? Oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. Purchased. We were all in on that one, and uh, like to this day, I, I just I wish we could have jumped in and like booted Rafe Coster out, <laughs> one of us in there, or anyone else who gave ten shits about that game. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but no, like there's hope here, and that makes me happy. Like. I bust I bust this game's chops a shit ton, but I don't want to see it fail. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, things I, like I, you know, I, I busted it up too. Rate. It's like it's like like I said, like there's still stuff they've advertised still hasn't yeah. you know made it in, but it's they're, like they're money raising. I don't like. Yeah, yeah, it, like it, and. I'd say this year is a little more tempered, but it's definitely like, you know, you look at the previous years, like all that sizzle reel stuff, like that sold starships. That's exactly what it did. And it's like, exactly. And like what you're telling me now, like that they've toned it back. Like maybe they're actually listening. Like, why don't you just show us what you're actually going to deliver? Yeah. And let us make that choice. You could have a fucking starship the size of a planet. Like, <laughs> Like, dude, I'll be lost before I even reach the helm. Like, <laughs> exactly, and and again, I I think because it's it's you know it's it's definitely long in the tooth. I mean, we're what was it? Uh, 
I say 2013. They're running out of the time at a time for this game to even be technologically relevant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Will granted, you know, they 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 actually did shift engines from uh, the original (laughs) um, uh, CryEngine. Well, it's I think it's still technically CryEngine, and because it's now part of the Lumberyard uh, engine. Okay, yeah. So they're they're in Lumberyard now. Yeah, yeah. They they've been in Lumberyard since 15, 16, something like that. So. Which isn't atypical, like you know, a lot of people like freaks out, like, oh my god, they're changing engines. Yeah, like, it's like, it's, bad, it's like man. this happens in game. Like, if you un, if you go into how games are made, this is not oh, yeah. an uncommon practice where not you at know, all. You'll in change. Fact, I feel I feel more potential for a game that realizes at a certain point we need to up the engine. Yeah. Than one that fucking just drives towards the brick wall with the one they got. Right, exactly, and oh. and it's like you know some some you know will change the engine entirely. Others will go through just like you know go from like Quake three to Quake four engine yeah. type thing. So it's not an uncommon practice, and but yeah, but I, I think there's still kind of like you know definitely within you know, the nor- I say normal gaming where you don't see the, the game advertised until like you know maybe a year out or within six yeah. months, and then then it goes full you know advertisement mode. Um, yeah, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. That's the other one coming the end of the month. Never heard shit about it till a month ago. And I'll tell you yeah. what, the game might be a big stinker, but the soundtrack. <laughs> they oh, nailed the soundtrack, huh? Fucking hell, is that a good Spotify playlist? But um, no, dude, I, I, I have um, cautious, cautious optimism for that one. <laughs> uh, just because, like, I know what they want to do. Right. I know... Uh, why am I forgetting his name? But Wing Commander guy, uh, I know what he's capable of. And this should be really good. So we'll see. And maybe, hmm, I was going to ask you this before we moved on to, to wrapping sure. it up. Yeah. Who who should we interview next? I've been in a bit of a kerfluffle. Oh. Uh, what is his name? Chris? Uh, Chris? Who who's the guy that's like the main driver behind that right now? Who Chris Roberts? Chris Roberts. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll reach out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? No, I mean, Jesus Christ! I, I at least have a half speaking relationship with Richard Garriott whenever that's he's true. climbing mountains or going to the bottom <laughs> of the ocean. Um, or going no, to the bottom I, of the planet. I would love to talk to him though, like. You know, you know, I've given this game a lot of shit, but I'm also not stupid. Like, you know, and I can speak for myself, though I'm sure Nick would agree agree with me. But Chris Roberts made a, a, a quadrilogy, whatever the hell you call it. You know, the Wing Commander series. Yeah, one, two, three, four. I and... see. I don't want to talk about. But <laughs> well, was was, was he involved with that though? Or I don't that... think he was. I think I, I think, think four was, was his no, last no. one. Yeah, and I think Origin did Prophecy, right? No, I think I, I think that was an EA game because that or, was or EA by Prophecy that point. Was, Prophecy was the time Ultima Seven came out. Then I think Wing, Wing Commander Three or Four came out. So no, this was well well into the EA takeover. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, but Wing Commander was one of the best series of our time for what it was, especially when Commander 3, which drove, like, every bit of technology we had to its limits. And it was a great game. Again, you play it now, you're like, wow, really? Yeah, no, for its time, that game was revolutionary. And that series was revolutionary, each iteration of it, and Chris Roberts was behind that. I would love to talk to him and talk about the old story. So maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I would, I would, oh, that actually would be really fucking fun. Um, so we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe, maybe he'll get back to us. <laughs> <laughs> but look, if you go through older episodes, I might've talked some shit. <laughs> you have to say it. Like, what did that guy say? No, cut him off. We're not talking to him. <laughs> you're a hero and a pioneer to me. And I just don't want to see you trip. Um, but anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, the voicemail line, 610-810-1654. Fred might be dead because we have no voicemails again tonight. So I got to follow up on that. No, I'm only kidding. I really hope not because I love you, Fred. 
But I did put out a question on Twitter tonight, and I basically was just curious what, um, you know, it's spoopy time. It's October. Mm -hmm, What mm -hmm. horror slash thriller thriller games are you playing right now or plan to? Um, And if you wanted to have called the voicemail with the about uh, four hours I gave you of notice, it would have been 8101654. But Jeremy, my boy Hoodie Ninja, uh, of the former Bad Fodder figures, wow, that really hurt to say, uh, said, I really need to get around to trying out Phasmophobia in VR, but seems like one that's way more enjoyable with friends. Um, absolutely. fucking lootly And I can say that because I didn't play it in VR, but as I mentioned earlier on the cast, I was dying. Uh, around hour 20, hour 18, 19, or 20 of last year's Extra Life. And then Nick and the boys uh, over at, you know, the Black Eagle Ops Discord uh, were playing some Phasmophobia, invited me in, and I think we played for two or three hours. Yeah, yeah, we, we went for quite a bit. It, dude, it, Playing with friends is so streamable. That's all I can say. (laughs) Because the events that happened that night are some that I will never forget. Like, that game induces a panic mode. Especially if you're playing with friends, because it's like you want to look like you know what you're doing. And the ghost uh, uh, Karen started hunting me because I asked her if she wanted to talk to the manager. (laughs) She did not like that. And then the lights started flickering, and I ran upstairs back to her room where I triggered the hunt. Like, I ran to try to open the door, and they're like, dude, the door gets locked in the hunt. I'm like, fuck! And I just turned around and ran back up the stairs and went into her room and crouched by her bed and somehow avoided the ghost. And all you hear is uh, Krieger, I think. It was Krieger going... um, goes, you got a set of brass balls. <laughs> it was the size of grapefruits. You went back in and survived. And then later on in the night, this was my favorite part of the whole night. Like I, I still dig for that clip every once in a while. I laugh my ass off. But we are in the midst of a hunt, uh, you know, an uh, uh, investigation. The ghost isn't hunting yet. But we're all kind of quiet because the lights are starting to flicker. Krieger's like, yeah, I think we have to go here. Oh, Jesus, fuck! Like, he just, like, he may not have said fuck. But it's evident that Krieger lost his mind in real life because his wife came up, (laughs) knew what he was playing, and scared the shit out of him. Oh, like, purposely knew what he was playing. Went back and, like, just gave him the best jump scare of all time. I didn't need to see it on video. It's so evident in the audio where he was like, oh my god, I almost punched you in the face! (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, Jeremy, um, I was basically saying, like, I can't even imagine that game in VR. A co-worker of mine, when I was at GitHub, played it in VR, and he was like, it's the most terrifying experience he had in gaming. And Jeremy's just like, I'm ready when you are. (laughs) So... I might have to get in touch with Jeremy and and schedule something for Extra Life Day. There you and, go. Uh, we can all we can all jump in a game, and him and I'll do it in VR, and we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it ends. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no man, uh, that that's definitely if there was any game I ever played that got my adrenaline pumping when I, like when I was a kid, like the Friday the Thirteenth Nintendo game when I first played it at fucking seven years old. It's it's definitely that one, so for sure. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, with that, we will wrap up the show. And uh, just big shout out to the fans, or you know, all our pals in the Save Point, uh, Twitter, everywhere else where y'all reach out to us. Uh, I'm gonna start more steadily. Uh, a great suggestion for my wife, actually, because who the fuck actually used the Podbean or wasn't anything. I'm going to start broadcasting the YouTube link, which is, like, simul-released when we, ah, we send yeah. this out. Yeah, there you go. And um, 
just start pushing the YouTube link for the show. I know we have a lot of people that listen on YouTube, but I'm just going to push that a little bit more. It's a little easier uh, just for anyone uh, that wants to listen on their phone or whatever. Like, there it is. Go to YouTube. Check it out. So I'll push that one when uh, I post the show on Monday. Um, big shout out to all y'all. Uh, finally, I'll just end the shout outs again to Bad Fodder Figures. Fellas, thank you so much uh, for years, literally, of week after week of entertainment. Uh, I will really miss y'all on the mic. Let's stay in touch. I uh, would love to have any of you on here as guests at any time. I know we'd all have a blast. And uh, I just, I really hope that's not the last we hear from y'all on the microphones. Like, I know you plan on doing game nights and stuff. But y'all are really great. And uh, thank you again. Um, other than that, you can reach us. Uh, you can go to the Save Point on Facebook, tiny.cc slash Save Point. Email us, theretrorents at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at theretrorents. I'm at retrorents Al. Nick is at Black Eagle Ops. And on Twitch, uh, check out Retrorents Al, because I'm going to be doing Extra Life Game Day in about a month or so. Uh, Black Eagle Ops as well for Nick, and we will, I am sure, do some kind of joint venture as we both start getting tired later in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just sending a lot of love out to y'all. You know, times are trying, as always, but let's uh, keep having fun. Play games and don't be dicks. Peace. All right. And out at the end of every show. Mm-hmm.